Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Steel and Flesh 2. Yes, a game that's 100% absolutely not ripping off the Mountain Blade series. This is the second video that I made of this game. It is a relatively new game to the channel and I would understand if you have absolutely no idea what this game is all about. So ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to get you up to speed. Steel and Flesh 2 is a single player open world sandbox RPG that is set in the Middle Ages. Hire troops, create and manage businesses, trade, wage war, and commit several war crimes across a 100% totally historically accurate map of Eurasia. Yes, 100% totally not exactly the same as the Mountain Blade series. That's basically the gist of it. Understood? Good. That's great. Now, what are we gonna do in this video? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've already read the title. So yes, we are gonna be attempting to become the most powerful warlord to have ever lived in the Middle Ages. With the help of utilizing the ancient forbidden knowledge of game exploits. Oh yes. So without further tomfoolery, let us begin. So for this exploit, ladies and gentlemen, you can do this at any point in the game. It doesn't matter whether you're already well established or you've just started a new game. And to prove that, we will be creating a new game with a lovely new character in a lovely new save slot. Uh, don't mind my other save games, I know that they have legendary gamer names. No need to point that out. Now for the difficulty select. It doesn't really matter what difficulty you choose for this exploit, but for me, I will be choosing the easiest difficulty. The Notorious Baby Mode What? The legendary pro gamer small chicken playing on baby mode? Preposterous! Well yes, this may seem like a cowardly move from the legendary pro gamer small chicken, but believe me ladies and gentlemen when I say that this game is ridiculously punishing on higher difficulties, to the point that the gameplay becomes really annoying. Hell, even in baby mode, you can easily get one shot from out of nowhere by enemy archers that literally has aimbot. And of course, that's not good. Besides, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to have fun and roleplay as a tyrant and a war criminal. So yes, but the main reason I am choosing baby mode is that we get to start the game with 25,000 gold in the bank. 25,000 gold is a lot in this game. You can afford and build your own small business with 25,000 gold. Or, hire enough troops that make a small starting army. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Besides, you can just change the difficulty later on in the game if you want more challenge. And now we get to name our lovely character. And the state that our character leads. But first, our character. And his name will be none other than the legendary Sukon D is not so yes ladies and gentlemen it's the legendary Mr. Snuts in the flesh. Oh ho, ho, ho. and he will be leading the state of Camelot to infinite fame and glory. <laughs> I love my naming scheme. Anyway, let's proceed. Now the spawn point. For this exploit there is no particular place you need to spawn in. You can just choose whatever place you want to spawn in the world. For me, I'll choose the Sultanate of Rum. Because why wouldn't I? They have Rum, it's in their name. Now for our character background. Again, it doesn't matter what background you choose. For Mr. Snatch, however, he will be starting out as a poor man. Yes, just a poor man that doesn't have anything special about him. Oh, little does the world know that this poor man is destined for greatness. Oh yes. Up next is the stat distribution. As you can see up here, we have 6 starting points to distribute. We are gonna be using 3 points on charisma and the other 3 on intelligence. Under the charisma tree, we will be increasing our leadership skill until we run out of points. Increasing our leadership skill will increase our army capacity and will allow us to hire advanced troops, which is just what we need. And for the intelligence tree, we are going to invest everything in surgery. The surgery skill reduces the chances of our soldiers dying in battle. 
Of course, as much as possible, we don't want our men dying in battle because that is a huge waste of gold. The lesser the casualties equals the lesser gold wasted. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, in war, men are resources, not sentient beings. For the other points, we can just use them up to increase whatever skill we like. It doesn't really matter and they're not that important. And with our stat points distributed, we are now ready to enter the game. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we are in. And we spawned close to the town Mamur. We are a poor man who conveniently starts with 25,000 gold in the bank. Yes, this is definitely the financial situation of a poor man. Now if we go in our inventory here and select things, you'll see that Mr. Snuts is really poor. He has absolutely nothing but these garbage clothes on. And we have a walking stick for a weapon. This is our weapon right here ladies and gentlemen. Just a long stick that does absolutely no damage whatsoever. Needless to say that we are gonna be absolutely obliterated the moment we step into a fight. This is where the 25,000 gold comes in. Why fight your battles when you can just hire people to fight them for you? Also, is it just me or Mr. Snuts looks like a bootleg Keanu Reeves? Alright, first things first. In order to do the exploit, we first need to have possessions. Possessions are the number of villages, towns, and castles that you and your state own. The only way to get possessions is through battling and conquering. So how are we gonna do this? Obviously, castles and towns are impossible to attack in our current state. So we're gonna be looking for a village to attack and capture instead. So let's open the map and look for a suitable target. Ooh, these villages are owned by rebels. Tempting. But no, not gonna risk waltzing into their territory. Ah, down here. Great, there's a village owned by bandits. Let's mark it and our character will immediately go to the location. Note that any village will do. Since we don't wanna risk going to war with major civilizations, it's best that we go to war with bandits this early in the game. And we have arrived. We need to capture this village. Now I need some men. Now I need some men to recruit. Note that you can recruit troops in any castle, provided that you are not at war with the civilization that owns it. So we're just gonna go into one of these castles here and recruit some troops. It doesn't really matter what type of units you recruit. In the end, numbers win the game. Alright, this castle is out. Let's move on to the next one. We need to recruit a lot of troops for a better chance of success. So we will be recruiting troops until we run out of money. Okay, we can't actually recruit elites. That's a shame. Doesn't matter, we can recruit most of the troops and that's more than enough. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we are now officially poor. And all in all, we have mastered a decent army of 54 troops. That's really good. And we are now ready to launch an assault on this poor, unsuspecting village. Guarded by an insane number of 12 men. Who will win? 12 versus 54. Put your bets in ladies and gentlemen and let's find that. We're in the battlefield. The village is just right there on the horizon and these are our men. Of course, I will do what every brave, courageous and valiant leader always do in a battle. Staying behind and doing absolutely nothing. No, this isn't cowardice alright? This is a strategy that gives me a tactical advantage in any situation. I am very brave, very courageous. Go men, go! And don't die because you are very expensive. I'm actually losing troops. You guys suck! Yes, I am being very helpful. 
by being completely useless. You guys can do it! Go! <laughs> well, you guys can't really blame me for not doing anything. I have a stick for a weapon for goodness sake. What's a stick gonna do against heavily armed men? I think all the enemy archers are dead. That's good. That means that I can now go forward. See, who says I'm not helping? I'm here at the front lines with you guys. I'm clearly carrying this entire raid on my shoulders. Okay, you guys do your thing. I'll uh, be on the lookout for enemies, just in case. Oh, you guys destroyed the gate. Go, man, attack. Oh, wait, what am I doing? Yeah, I'll just stay behind. Oh, they're all dead. Yeah, we won. I mean, I won. Yes, I definitely single-handedly carried this entire raid. Yup, all by myself. And we got loot. I'll be taking all of it. Thank you. Alright, now that we have won the raid, we now officially own the village. And the village now falls under our possession. Which automatically makes our character the king of our own state. And you can see that by the gold thing on top of our character. Now we are ready for the next step of the exploit. What we're gonna do is we're going to open the king's menu just down here and then we are going to give up the throne. In other words, abdicate. Yes, we are gonna be giving up the crown and stop being king. You might think that this is a bad idea. Well, it is. But in our case, it's not. So we're just gonna abdicate real quick and you'll notice that the gold thing on top of our character has disappeared. We are no longer king. But ladies and gentlemen, this is where the war crimes begin. Oh yes. So we're just gonna walk back into the village we recently captured and then select the squad menu. The squad menu is basically a list of the defenders of the village. Nothing really special there. However, looking at this interface, you might think to yourself, Yeah, everything's normal. Everything's fine. Wait, wait, what on earth is this? Something's wrong. Something's very wrong here. Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen. Something is very wrong indeed. Oh yeah. For some unknown reason, we have the option to attack our own village. Yes, you heard that right. We can attack and raid our own village. This is really bad, but at the same time, really damn good. So it's already obvious, we are gonna be attacking our own village. We don't really need to do it manually, we can just auto fight, it's a lot faster that way. So auto fight we go, and of course as expected we have won easily. And look at that, we even got loot from our own men. <laughs> we can take two captives as well. Yes ladies and gentlemen, we just took two of our own men as prisoners. How is this possible? Oh no. <laughs> And look at that, new guards have spawned in. So once again, we'll go inside the village, go in the squad menu, then attack our own village again. After the battle is over, do it again, and again, and again. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the exploit in its true glory. It involves directly farming and slaughtering your own men for infinite quantities of wealth, equipment, prisoners, and fame. You can do this indefinitely, and you'll always turn a profit. Gold running low, then sell the loot which you got from your own men. Running low on troops, no problem. You can just forcibly hire your captured prisoners into your own army. It's that simple and easy. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have successfully created ourselves an infinite gold generator. Now isn't that wonderful? The painful wails, the dying screams of our own men as they suffer from a never-ending loop of pain and death. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the sound of infinite gold being generated. Oh yeah. Okay, it's been a while now. And as you can see up here, we have gotten ourselves quite the wealth. As well as gained back the 25,000 gold we had at the start of the game. We have grown our army significantly and it is now in the hundreds. And we have also gained so much fame because of it all. Yes, we are now famous for slaughtering our own people. This is all because of farming this one village non-stop over and over again. Ah yes, I do love the sound of eternal torment as a warlord in the middle ages. 
Okay chicken, that's great and all, but how do we become king again? Alright, we abdicated. Well, worry not, my pro gamers. In order to take back our status as king, all you need to do is to find and talk to any king belonging to any state you are not at war with. Then, take an oath and pledge your allegiance to their state. This axon will integrate you into their state and you yourself will now work for them. After taking the oath, immediately revoke it by talking to the king again, then a simple click of a button. Revoking your pledge of allegiance is considered as an act of betrayal and you will immediately go to war with whatever state you took an oath to. But hey, you got your crown back, so all is good. Do note that if you are king, you cannot perform the exploit, reason why we had to abdicate in the first place. So before doing this action and becoming king again, I advise you to abuse the heck out of your village and farm a lot of gold out of your own men. And that's it for today's video. We have successfully made Mr. Snuts become the most famous and the most prestigious warlord in all of the land by simply making him perform countless atrocities on his own people. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 100% totally historically accurate indeed. I personally wanna say thank you to you and to all who supported the development of this channel. We just recently hit 500 subs and I'm happy, very happy. For me, that's a pretty damn good number right there. Once again, I thank you and see you guys in the next one.